Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy real estate market. And while you're here, do me a favor and hit that like button because YouTube made some changes. And if you hit the like button, you'll get better gas mileage on your car. So uh, be sure and try that. Um, you know, they're trying to help all they can. <laughs> what a weekend, huh? 80 degrees yesterday. We are in springtime weather in Arizona, my favorite time of year. And, and spring training starts this week. They settled the... Uh, the lockout and spring training is going to start. And evidently, though, we don't get to have a season opener here. The first game is not going to be in Phoenix. In fact, there isn't going to be a baseball game in Phoenix for a month. And people are a little torqued about that. So don't blame them. But spring training's fun. If you haven't been to a spring training game, there are stadiums all over the valley. My favorite one is downtown Scottsdale. It's got a great little lounge area, balcony, which is cool to watch the game from up there. So... And then you can buzz around downtown Scottsdale after the game. So anyway, go out and enjoy. Uh, because today, we only have 4,700 homes on the market. And uh, that's pretty low for a Monday. Uh, seasonally, we tend to get down uh, and hit a bottom around the first part of spring. And then the inventory starts to climb. We're not seeing that yet. Here's what we're seeing. We're seeing um, the blue line is number of listings that have come on. The red line is listings going under contract and you can see here that we actually went a little bit above by about 25 homes um, and we kind of peaked up last week to 4461 which is a pretty robust number for where we've seen ourselves. that little yellow arrow is where we were last year so are we going to see listings dip again and then come back up who knows there is really um, just you can't make sense of, of why there aren't any listings. You can talk demographically. You can say, well, baby boomers aren't listing. And, and there's just a lot going on out there. The average home buyer right now seems to be the investor. Uh, the average home buyer going out just trying to find a place or a first home is, is getting outbid tremendously. And uh, I want to talk about some of the numbers we're seeing. If you saw my uh, show with Pat on Friday, um, I made a comment or I showed a home that was a coming soon listing. It was, wasn't was going to come on till like the first week of April. And I talked to them yesterday, they're friends of mine, and they said, uh, we just accepted a contract. And I said, well, I thought it wasn't coming on till April. And he said, well, we had four people request to see it, so we went ahead and let them come in. Out of the four people, they got two offers, and they had a third one coming, but they told them they were already under contract. This was a coming soon listing. Coming soon means you can put it on the multiple listing service, and I'll show you what the MLS is here because somebody was asking me about it. And uh, let's see, I'm going to pull up the tab here. So this is what the multiple listing service looks like. So what I do when I check and see um, listings, I can say active and coming soon. We have 5,540. And then I can see a list of the homes and I can see which ones are active. They're setting appointments now and ones that are marked as coming soon. They'll be ready later. And it's not uncommon for you to get a call that goes, hey, I got clients from out of town. Do you mind if I show it to them? I realize it's not coming on until later. And uh, they snagged a buyer. And that is rare to snag a buyer on a coming soon listing that quickly. But that shows you just how bonkers things are going right now. Monthly average sales price per square foot here is $295.55. Those are the homes that have already closed. And that's what the price was that recorded. Now, we have an average price per square foot of under contract homes of $300, which is the highest. It's a record. A couple of ways to look at this number. One, it's $5 higher than last month. But um, we have to ask the question, well, they're under contract at $300 a square foot on average, which is what people were asking. Uh, is that going to stick? Because the number that the home sold for doesn't actually get recorded until you know it's the deal is closed that's why if you call me and say hey rick how much did you sell that house for i go well it's under contract yeah how much we're not going to tell you uh because it, the official number doesn't come out until it records so right now though you're seeing five dollars a square foot higher than last year that is a short-term trend that says for the next one to two months prices are still going up. And the other thing to look at when you say, well, are we sure we're going to be $5 higher than people's asking price? I have to take you back to this chart. The number of homes 
going above their asking prices, going back up to 53.6%. It was coming down back here in, uh, let's see, what, in December. And that's probably just because it was the holidays. But look at this. It's back up. The bidding wars are out there in full force. And uh, I'm not seeing any relief coming anytime soon. So as you're waiting for real estate prices to come down or crash, you need to go back and say, well, what really happened in 2008? And, and I'm seeing a lot of people just comparing the chart. And the only thing that they're comparing is that prices went up and came down. And right now we're seeing the prices came up. So therefore, they're going to come down. They could, but it's going to take a real financial credit squeeze for that to happen. Are there indications that the financial markets may be in trouble? Well, this Ukraine situation certainly isn't helping. You know, cutting off all these economies, cutting off Russia, uh, throwing all this turmoil into the financial markets, making everybody nervous. Could happen. Could it crash the housing market? I don't know. I'm not an economist, but I, I like to go back and look at history. And here's this. This is new listings year to date. Now, this chart's always going to go up, folks, because it accumulates at each month for the year. So you look at the yearly total. So right now, in 2020, 2021, our yearly total of new listings every month added up was 115,119 homes. If we go over here to 2007, it was 162,000. That's 2007. 2006, it was 171,000. Listings were climbing at a record pace in 2006. Nobody was paying attention. Although the listings were coming up, people were purchasing the homes with adjustable rate mortgages. It didn't make any sense. And we have a comment here from uh, Antares. You will see many of out-of-state investors are buying home through agent via webcam. There should be a cap on how many homes are out investors uh, can buy so residents can have primary home. You know, I'm kind of nervous about caps. Almost every home sold is listed for rent after a month or so. We're running about 19% investor owned right now. So I'm a little nervous about caps, rental caps, the government getting involved because um, they can just mess it up. You always end up with unintended consequences. You're better off to let the market adjust. If It's kind of like the price of gas right now. Nothing cures the price of gas. High prices, better than high prices. People stop driving, stop flying. Prices start to come down. There's every possibility that, that gas prices could make a reversal. I hope so. I'm planning a big uh, big trip in spring, so uh, but I don't know. Um, but we're going back to investors, I mean, how do you cap it? Um, because, you know, now you're going to have to track every sale coming in. You're going to have to say, okay, what number do we look at? One indicator, how can we tell somebody no? HOAs can do that in a condominium or townhome complex. They do it all the time because they don't want the majority of the owners to be non-owner non occupied, because if, they, if that rate gets too high, they can no longer qualify as a warranted complex and get FHA financing. So that little bubble can control that, but controlling it in the total housing market, I think is problematic. If we see, like we're seeing now, we're seeing the majority of the housing permits that are coming up now are for multi-family housing, in other words, apartment complexes, and that's turning into a really big number. The vacancy rate right now is running about 4.5%. It could creep up to 10. If that happens, rent will stabilize, kind of start to decline. The first thing you'll see is, hey, you get your first month free, stuff like that. That'll work its way into the single-family residence where investors are not going to be able to get the money they once thought they would. Uh, they may sell if there's an opportunity to put their money somewhere else which right now there isn't, which brings us to interest rates. We have highest rates in nearly three years ahead of next week's hike. This is a Friday article. So Wednesday, the central bank is getting together and they're going to let us know how much they're going to raise their overnight rate, which they're already saying is going to be like, you know, a quarter point. But the interesting thing is, and here's what you need to understand about this when you talk about the Fed talking on Wednesday, if they raise it a a few points, I'll bet you see mortgage rates go down. Right now, 30-year fixed on a national survey is 4.29. They've already got the rate increase cooked in the books. So the market has already said, okay, we know you're going to raise it. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and put the rates in here. So here's the weekly survey-based rate, which is orange, and here's the actual daily average rate, which is blue. So it said 
2013 actually shares a key ingredient with our perfect storm fed, fed bond buying. And that's when rates started going up, up, up. And so the bottom line, I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this thing here, is they're talking about inflation and oil and the impact on what's going, going on right now. And its bottom line says everything hinges on inflation right now. That was already true before Ukraine, and now it's painfully true. Inflation is the Fed's key consideration that have pushed rates higher. From here, markets will be paying even closer attention to oil prices and inflation metrics. They'll also be listening intently this week. I say this week, they wrote next week, as Fed Chairman Powell comments on whether the Fed's reaction function might change again in light of the commodities surge. And what I was saying last week, I think the central bank has just had all their tools removed out of their toolbox. They, were, they plan on raising rates and tapering to bring inflation down. And now all of the reasons that we have inflation are completely out of their control. Central bank can't do anything about oil. They can't do anything about the surge in wheat prices last week. They can't do anything about that except watch it. And they're in a precarious situation right now to where if they raise the overnight rate too fast, then everything could start coming down even harder than it might already slip just because of what we're seeing with uh, oil prices and food prices. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm going to be all ears on Wednesday to see what they have to say. Now, if you're thinking at all of selling um, and you're in a position where you can, it's really glaringly obvious that, you know, look, put it on the market now, you'll get more than your list price uh, by, you know, 50%. Not You won't be 50% higher, but odds are that, uh, that somebody's going to come in and offer you more than your list price. How long is that going to be around? A few more months. Uh, could there be a calamity that changes that? Possibly. So that's why I say if you're thinking about selling, then uh, let's talk. Let's put it on the market now and get it because we know the market's hot now. We know spring selling season is here. And uh, now's the time to list. For you buyers, all I can say is keep swinging the bat and see what you can, uh, what you can pick up. It's tough. It's tough out there. You're not going to go into a house and be the only one writing an offer on that house. So it gets a little nuts and crazy. Now, looking forward, I'm really going to be watching the Fed's fund rate. I'm going to be watching that percent of homes closing over list price, but all of it boils down to inventory. We have to have that number climb. Until that happens, we're just not going to see any improvement out there as far as pricing pressure. If you look towards uh, waiting, when here's the, another kicker on new construction, I'm seeing and I'm hearing that there are, and this is nationally, some of it going on here, that they're canceling your contract. You wrote a contract with them almost a year ago for this new build. In the meantime, prices have gone up 25%. They want to kick you to the curb. They want you out so they can sell that house for 25% more. So when you write a, home, a contract with that new home builder, ask that question. Show me in this contract that you can't cancel this because you want to raise prices. That's important because you're sitting there and you're waiting for a year and now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, we're canceling your contract because uh, we're going to you know, put it back on the market. That's going on a lot. So be careful. Ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Get a real estate agent to represent you so that he can dive into the contract. Make sure that they don't do that because you know what? They can cancel you at any time and you just get your earnest money deposit back. That's all. They go, sorry, here's your check. And they usually require a pretty decent earnest money at uh, on new builds because they're trying to get cash flow. Here's another thing that I want to caution you on, on new builds. They um, they make you make the earnest money check out to the builder. Now, when I first moved here in 96, I was buying a home from, uh, uh, gosh, who was it? Beezer Homes. And I was moving out from upstate New York, and they wanted me to give them a 10% down payment, earnest money check, made out, not to the title company, but to Beezer Homes. And I said, I don't want to write the check out to Beezer Homes. I don't know if you guys are going to be around in 30 days. You know, oh, we're... You know, they're listening on the stock market. Well, so was Pan Am. And so I just kept delaying them. I kept telling them as a corporate relocation, I kept telling them that my money hadn't hit the bank account yet. So I gave them a deposit of like 4500 and I put it in the title company. I held it at title. There was no way I was going to write a check to a builder because if that builder goes belly up for whatever reason, you know, the owner of that company decides he wants to go to the Cayman Islands and party hardy, 
then you're stuck. They have your money. But if it's in a title company, it's a neutral party. Now, a lot of these builders are not letting you do that. It, it just raises uh, some suspicions on my end, and they want that money for cash flow. So as you give them that 10% down payment, that 23000 and they told me this at Beezer Homes. Well, they like to raise some cash up front. It helps them with their cash flow and building. I said, well, they can do that on somebody else's back. So a week before they close, she calls and goes, um, don't worry about sending that money in, uh, that earnest money to our account. She goes, you know, we're just going to go ahead and close next week. And I said, thank you. I never had any intention of doing that. So <laughs> I kind of dodged the bullet on that one. So be careful. A lot of things to watch out for on new construction. And having said that, they're building some beautiful homes out there right now in communities. So if you're out looking around, you're going to see some nice homes. But they're starting about 450. Then you got to layer on everything else on top of that. So happy shopping. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to smash that like button to improve the gas mileage on your car. And we will see you later this week. Take care.